Insert the line. My name is Matthew Garrett from England. It's the 10th of June 2019 and I'm going to be uh, having a go on the upright version of Bally Midway's Gorf, programmed by Jamie Fenton. And I'm going to be trying to have a go at Keith Swanson's score, which is one point, just less than 1.2 million, which he got back in 2011. I'll talk through some of the tactics that I use as well, because people have asked. And I've got my trusty mobile phone just sellotaped to the top of the screen here as well. Right, let's get started. So I'm playing the upright version, three lives, one bonus life at Space Captain, and this is uh, ROM set one. Long live Gorf, and what it has done, um, made back in 1981. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start, we're going to begin on Astro Battles, and you'll see an alien that bounces in from this top right side of the screen. I'm going to move up, shoot once, and try and get it. It's not very difficult to do, it's the way most people start their game. Like now there's going to be a shield, it appears now, and that helps me. It blocks their shots. If I fire, my shot goes through. That's one shot at a time on Gorf. If I move, fire too quickly, I won't hit anything. So I have to let my shot land before I can shoot again. I can move up to here and down. Gorf's the first ever multi-scene game, so it's not just Astro Battles. After this, we'll go into Laser Attack. If we both fire at once, if the computer fires at the same time as me, what will happen is both of our shots will be blocked. So imagine that will happen. <laughs> Two shots fire at once, both shots disappear. Here, there are 10 things on the screen, 8 camera cars and pilots that give me 100 points each, you'll notice they give 100 each, regardless whether they're the yellow ones or the orange ones, the orange ones just fire in a slightly different way, and these lasers, they give 300 each. Now, I can actually hire, hide from the left or the right hand side of the screen, and that can't reach me, it can't kill me. Now Galaxians, once again, unlike the dedicated original Galaxians cabinet where you could just move left and right, I prefer Gorf because you can also move up and down. If I shoot them in the air, you'll see a score is released. So each time I shoot them, the points are shown on the screen. However, if I shoot them at the back here, no points come up at all. So I get more points for shooting them in the air. Each yellow dot will kill me, so I have to watch out for those. But as soon as it makes uh, the nice rewarding noise, like that, I can hit anything. So as soon as I've cleared the level, I'm invincible for the rest of that stage. Here, space warp. 12 blue dots in the middle. Represents the 12 things that I have to kill. It will fire wherever I was last. So if I move to the left hand side of the screen, it will fire over here. So what that means is you don't sit still, you have to keep moving. It can move both clockwise and anti-clockwise, and the angle of the circle can change. So, flagship. Only requires one direct hit to the centre of the ship, just there. We can look at the standard way of playing Astro Battles is to shoot all of the red ships going across. I can't shoot the end one because I can't reach until the Astro Battles begin to move. And that's the normal way that people play this game. I tend to shoot one and then I try and shoot a laser early on as well like that. My normal motion is to move up, try and shoot one of the kamikaze pilots, and then I tend to shoot the laser on the left, although not always. The score can kill you. So whenever you see the score appear, don't ever move into it because you will lose a life. You can 
see that's very close to me. I could easily move into that. Golf genuinely is my favourite arcade game. For a number of different reasons. The cabinet design with not just the marquee lit, but it's got a bezel light and it's also got a light underneath as well, so it's very lit to the cabinet. I like the style of joystick they get on it, which is the same style as you'd find on Tron. Wolf was out first. I do like the side art sticker, it's got a nice sort of speckled blue paint on it as well. And they haven't wasted costs on it. The the joystick has lights in it. There's ranking lights at the side as well, which doesn't appear on many other games. Other bits about the cabinet. Oh, I can hit this on the way back. I missed it the first time, so you can choose it on the way back. Yeah, other things about the cabinet, they've wasted no cost on it, as I was saying. It's got stereo sound. There's two speakers that sit above my head, and there's individual volume controls for both of them. Gorf runs off the Bally Midway Astrocade card rack system. It's got five boards inside, two of them are RAM boards, it's got a CPU board, a pattern board, and a ROM board in there as well. Other games that ran off that system include Wizard of War, the most successful game. <laughs> Professor Pac-Man also ran off it, which was uh, a game that they only produced 300 units of. And I gather that 200 of them got returned because it wasn't a very good game. And most of those cabinets got converted into Pac-Land. This, I think, is the only vertical game on the Astrocade system. All of the other Astrocade games were horizontal. There's a baseball game, um, Best Bases I think it's called. There's a few other games that run on the system. So I got a bonus life when I got to Space Captain. After Mission 5, I got a bonus life, and I don't get any more bonus lives for the rest of the game. That's the only one I would get. Now you notice now I've changed my pattern. I tend to be shooting them over here. It gives me a better range on the ones at the top, and also I can shoot more aliens before they land to gain some bonus points. I don't actually worry too much about the bonus points and what I shoot and what I miss. It's just quite a fast moving game, and the points accumulate naturally. Scorpions take no prisoners. So the speech um, came out in English, French and German. I gather it's quite hard to understand whatever language. My Gorpion robots are unbeatable. So there's 20 of these to kill, 12 on Space Cadet, the first time there are only 12 to kill, and then every other time that I find Space Warp there will now be 20. They move faster of course, the angles that they fly at is widened, mainly the speed I think. I do have to watch that they, once they're off the screen, they can fire one last boulder. I've been 
promoted to Space Warrior. Oh, it's a little graphical glitch. You'll see bits like this happen throughout the game if we look for them. So that yellow, that one at the top, so that, that goes across, it sits still. And when it's stationary, when it flies across and it's stationary, that's the easiest time to shoot that one. Here we go, it's sitting still. I've missed it this time when it flies back. I do like the shooting method on Gorf. You might think it's sluggish being able to fire one shot at a time, but as you can see from levels like this, it's not sluggish at all. When they're close to you, you can fire very fast. So Jamie Fenton was working on a sequel to this game, Ms. Gorf, um, which unfortunately never got released. Um, games Crash of 83, so we've got to stop to it. There are videos you'll see online of, of Jamie playing the, the, the demo version, I guess you'd call it. Game and test stage. Now it's going to say you're promoted to Space Avenger. Now it's the last time the game will say the word promoted. So you've been promoted to Space Avenger. Space Avenger is uh, the highest name of a rank, so from now on it won't say the word promoted, it'll just say Space Avenger at the end. A lot more shots cancel out now. I tend to find it happens left if I'm less if I'm on the left hand side of the screen. Like that. I'm going to speak less and less frequently as the game progresses. I'm just going to settle into my patterns and I'm sure you'll see what they are. I tend to shoot these at the top, move to the left, and then try and, uh, to the right, sorry, and then try and work my way to the left. I don't worry if I miss them. But I try and shoot them because they're off the screen quicker. I think there's less risk. It's not so much to accumulate, or well, does get points to get 100 for each one, but it's more about reducing risk. Playing for a high level, it's just the odd things. Like the debris on the ship here. If I shoot it now, the debris flies to the right, but would have done. Yeah, so flagship later on, I try and stay out the way of the debris on the ship. It doesn't bother me as much at the start. When I first fly up and hit the flagship, the first bullet will go to the first bit of its ship will fly to the right. So I just move out the way, and I, when I shoot it on the left, it, it will the debris will fly to the left as well. So knowing where the debris is going to come off the flagship makes it easier to dodge. I don't shoot until I reach the top, so I don't kill myself. So that shooting at your own ship, it, it does happen. 
you shoot, and as you move up, your your own bullet kind of hits your ship, and you just explode. Very annoying. With this really now, it's mainly the angle that I'm watching for. If it flies very vertically like this, I have to be careful that doesn't hit me. Other than that, it's fairly straightforward this level. On the harder ROM set, it's much faster, it fires many more boulders. Um, but there are less of them to kill, there are just 12 of them to kill. Uh, um, sorry, 16 of them to kill. said nice shot Space Avenger, it didn't say you have been promoted. I first used to play this back in an arcade in Bognor Regis from England in the seaside. I used to have three of these in, a, in that arcade and I used to be so short at the time I used to have to stand in a little stall to see the screen. So again, on the right, and then I'm trying to draw them to the left, and then back to the right. Just puts me out of the way of the bullets. I don't like to take any chances. That's pretty much all I have to say, so I'm going to keep more silent now and play the game. But if anything comes up on the way through, if I think of anything interesting, I'll chip in. But for now, it really is an endurance test. Or I'll be trying to work up to, I don't know what mission, maybe 800 or something. The mission I'd like to get to would be, if I could get to mission 873, that would be brilliant, because that's the model number of Gorg that's printed on the instruction manual, and also on the bezel of the upright arcade game on the left hand side, it says Midway 873. Timings, I look to get 100,000 points for mission 62, possibly 63, that's where I expect to get that point. And it'll take me about 40, 40 minutes, 42 minutes maybe to get to mission 100. Inside the coin door, there's actually a, a 
um, slam mechanism. So what happens is if you hit the door really hard, the, the game will reset. I always used to wonder why that was on there. What, the, what these, On pinball machines you see a tilt mechanism. Why would you need a slam mechanism on a door? And the reason I've been given is that with earlier games such as Space Invaders, you could actually get free credits by causing a vibration on a coin door. The vibration would go through and trick the machine into giving you a credit. So they put those slam mechanisms on there so that didn't happen. If you know any different reasons or you don't think that's right, please do let me know. I'm always interested to learn. I can lose a life on any stage. I'm least likely to lose a life on Astro Battles. But if I do, it will be by one yellow alien left at the very end. So I'm always careful and treat it with respect. Try and kill it early and I've got all that space to get him. So Gorf was made in three different cabinet designs. This is the upright. Um, it used to come in the Mini Mite, the, or otherwise known as a cabaret version. Um, similar, just a smaller screen. Um, same joystick, did slightly smaller control panel that had, was painted. Um, and there were no ranking lights on it. The cocktail the, is uh, in the style of most of the American cocktail tables. Nice machine. The interesting quirk with that, I always think, is the joystick, I always play it cross-handed, the, the joystick is on the right and the fire button is on the left, whereas modern games have the joystick on the left and the fire button on the right. Yeah, so being, I'm left-handed, so when I play the cocktail version, I always play it cross-handed. I don't need a 
playing golf since I was tiny, since I guess since it first came out. I own my first machine oh, for over 30 years. I was silly enough to, well I, I had all three, I used to have the upright, the cabaret and the cocktail. I sold all three. The upright I sold oh, two years ago maybe. I missed it, so I've repurchased. Look at a little graphical glitch down here. See the alien? That happens a lot in the game. It's clear as well. So in the top left corner, not on Astro Battles, it doesn't tend to happen, um, but on other levels, particularly laser attack, you'll see graphical glitches in the left hand side. You'll see the off and the orange alien. There's a little interesting Astro Battles glitch there, the one that got shot. Sometimes you'll fire elsewhere in the screen, it'll shoot a random Astro Battle for you. So I did say that 100,000 tends to happen on level 62 or 63. It looks like 63 today. The game's not getting any harder at all, it's staying exactly the same difficulty. I always wonder if after Space Avenger there are any little changes to make it harder. I think I just imagined them. has been my favourite arcade game and I think it always will be. I think it holds up today. A lot of people don't give it a chance if they see it on a bad monitor. It, it looks awful. If they play it on MAME, it looks bad. It hasn't got that control stick that you need to get the game and the speech has got to be there. I know the recent versions of MAME do have this. Not the joystick, obviously. But it's never the same experience as playing the arcade cabinet. Rewarding sounds of the speakers just above my head. So the expense of the cabinet, they haven't taken shortcuts. The, the monitor's at a nice angle because it's a CRT monitor. But they've actually got this bit of plastic that comes out the back of the machine to accommodate the monitor being exactly where they wanted it. And with the, the marquee light, the bezel light, the, the light underneath, I think it's a very striking design on the cabinet. And Tron obviously liked it because they well, essentially copied it, another midway game, but it's heavily based on Gorf. But the, the rankings that doesn't exist in other games, I think it's great. You can walk up and see it, you, you feel a sense of achievement. You're getting to Space Avenger. I think they should put that into more games. It's just a cost. And a joystick having this little light on the top of the joystick, I think is brilliant. I say the pace of the game, it's always moving, there's always something to do, and I like the you get a 20 second break now, and I like that.
Dorfians take no prisoners, so I just think it said Dorfians state your craziness. And it doesn't make sense, but I was young. That's what I thought it said. So they don't like the side art on Gorf. Now it is a sticker that goes on the side, but I like the fact that the paint is like a, it's blue but speckled with white. I like that. And I just remember when I was younger walking around, the first thing I'd notice is the side art. So I'd look around an arcade to see if they had Gorf, and I'd be looking out for that side art. So for me, it, it's a brilliant thing that I, I look forward to seeing everywhere. And still now, if I go to a retro arcade, I'm looking for that side art. And with the bulbs in the machine, the marquee's got two separate bulbs in it. The lower marquee, uh, beneath the control panel, that has two bulbs as well. And uh, the bezel light, that one's got one bulb as well. So again, it's not lazy, it's not just one bulb to put into each place. They've thought about it and they've made it look nice. It's a high-end cabinet. Now we can update the cabinet slightly with LED lights on the rankings and uh, LED bulbs as well. On the harder ROM set, this throws a lot more at you, a lot more boulders, it goes a lot, lot faster. I will at some point do a high score video and tactics for the hard ROM set as well. midway coin door in it. Again I talk about not being lazy. There's, there's two coin mechs which is great for various reasons. With the old mechanical ones they could get stuck and blocked and it did happen so at least you've got a, another coin mech so the game can keep taking money and in some arcades of course they might have used one for tokens or for a larger denomination coin like a 50p in England. So one would be 10p's and one would be 50p's. <laughs> But nowadays you just get one coin mech, if it's blocked, it's blocked, you can't play it. These are big machines of the day. About 30,000 of these machines estimated to have been made. And I think the reason why Gorf is, is 
not played so much nowadays. Pac-Man, of course, still is. Pac-Man was always the big game of the 80s. I'm not saying people play the older games as much, but games like Galaga, people to remember, tend to remember more than Gore. And I think the main reason, in my mind, is it's just you don't get the arcade feel at home. It's just not emulated well. Or it, I know that it's got better in the recent main versions. The slowdown on Black Teams, for example, is better. But it just doesn't feel the same. The, you need the arcade version, and you need a decent cabinet to get the proper experience. So when we get slightly harder, I think the pace the flagship was flying at was quicker than it starts off at Avenger. Uh, it could just be me imagining it. So the blue screen here, the, the idea, if you, if you read the Gorf manual, we're in the daylight. This is us. The Gorfian invasion has attacked and, um, and we've got to try and do the daylight scene and then we zoom off at ultra speed now to the nighttime scene. And we get, our, as it says in the instructions, a dramatic confrontation with the enemy flagship. It says we've got to repel the hostile invasion and launch a counter-attack. It tells you in the writing when the game begins. On the demo screen. So the Gorf memorabilia you can get is there's uh, a player's guide which came wrapped in a little seal. There's Gorf coin that was given away at one of the expos. A Gorf t-shirt. There are remakes of Gorf t-shirts. You can buy on eBay now and certainly recommend getting one. Now on eBay you can buy little keychains, Gorf keychains. They're great. I've got one of those with my keys on it. Two versions of the arcade flyer. I play the game, I don't really know anything about programming, but I understand that the fourth was programmed in fourth. The source code is available online. Um, and also with a mixture of TERFs as well, which is the language that was being used development system for Musgorf. If you have read your Wikipedia bits about Musgorf, you'll see that the 8-inch uh, drives with the program on are held in a computer museum in America. Um, now we do have copies of it. We do have this. So if anyone wants the information, it is available. There's a Gorf Restoration Facebook group. You can find it via that. So any help completing this Gorf, greatly appreciated. Now as I approach level 100, I'm going to take a break on the laser attack. So I'm just going to try and make it through to uh, 
laser attack and then take a break. Over 40, 40 minutes gonna play. And I'm just gonna kill these last few and then take a little break. So two more to kill. Take my time. Understandably not in any hurry to kill them. Don't want to lose a silly life. Trying to take a break. There we go. I'm going to pause it. Well, I say pause it. Leave it running right there. And have a little break. <laughs> 